Hi, my name is Ashish and uh, in this video or from this video, I will make another playlist wherein I'll mention Azure Architect interview questions and answers, scenario based, wherein I will try to cover uh, most of the topics that are being asked or the questions or the scenario or the use cases that are being asked in the Azure Architect interviews, uh, senior architect or the architect initial architect level job or maybe going on a principal architect as well. I would start with the networking, then I will try to cover about uh, migration, security. I mean, we'll decide, but I'll, I'll cover with more on the infra side and that to be from networking. So my first topic to discuss will be Azure Private DNS Resolver. Most of the candidates that I've interviewed are not confident while they are answering this question and or are not able to explain you know in layman or uh, in a detailed way about this scenario so i'll pause the video and, and uh, we'll start the azure private dns resolver scenario for azure architect interview questions and answers okay i hope you can clearly see the picture i've taken from the Microsoft documentation. So if you read, if you see here about the Azure DNS private resolver, so it is a solution for using Azure DNS private resolver to simplify hybrid recursive DNS system, like right? or the resolution. You can use the DNS private resolver for on-premise workload or for Azure workload as well. So if you see the first step here, like right, how it is, from the client VM, the request is going to the internal DNS server, which has a conditional forwarder setup, right? So we will discuss uh, the alternatives for hybrid recursive DNS resolution. So this first section will discuss that uses the DNS forwarder virtual machine or a VM. And then we will see how we can use DNS private resolver. So this, this use case discusses a DNS forwarder VM, right? So before the DNS private resolver was available, a DNS forwarder VM was deployed so that on-premise server could resolve request to the Azure private DNS service. This is the DNS forwarder, let me. This is the DNS forwarder that we have applied in the scenario number one. So there is a conditional forwarder on the on-premise. This is the on-premise network. And we have a internal DNS 10.0.0.254 and we have a conditional forwarder which has a forward lookup zone, reverse lookup zone, conditional forwarders to database.windows.net. Okay, so if the request goes to this, I have a conditional forwarder setup that will take this to my, and this is the private link that I have on this Azure SQL database. If you are familiar with how to configure an Azure SQL uh, pass instance and how you can create a private endpoint, you will understand this. But if you don't know it, I would suggest you to go and read about how to deploy Azure SQL database pass and then how to configure a private link, right? So in this scenario, we'll have the name resolution, a conditional forwarder on the on-premise DNS server, this one request to Azure and a private DNS zone is linked to a virtual network. Request to the Azure service then resolve to the appropriate private IP address. Okay. And in this scenario, we will, we cannot use the Azure public DNS service to resolve on-premise domain names. Okay. So how would a workflow look like? Let me erase everything and draw again. So how would a uh, workflow look like? So a client VM would send a name resolution request for this database. It is equal one dot database dot windows dot net to an on-premise internal DNS server because this client VM wants to connect to this. So a, good, a conditional forwarder is configured on the internal DNS server. Here it is. 
that forward that forwarder forwards the dns query for database.windows.net because we have an entry here as a conditional forwarder to 1050.254 okay which is the ip address of my dns forwarder vm okay now the dns forwarder vm would send the request to 168 63.129.16, the IP address of the Azure internal DNS server. So this is the uh, this is the IP address that is uh, the IP of the Azure internal DNS server. You cannot change this. You cannot edit it. You cannot create it. It's by default. The Azure DNS server sends a name resolution request for AZ SQL one dot database dot Windows dot net to the Azure recursive resolvers. Okay, and the resolvers respond to the this name Azure AZ SQL one dot private link dot database dot windows dot net because it has a private link associated with it. Otherwise, this will have a public IP, but we are not using the public IP in this scenario. Okay. Now, what would happen is the Azure DNS server sends a name resolution request for this private database and then it would uh, contact the private DNS zone, which is private link dot database dot windows dot net. And the private DNS zone responds with the private IP, which is this 10.5.0.5. Because it, we have created a private link endpoint for our SQL pass. Okay, the response that associates the CNAME, az SQL one dot private link database with the A record 10.5.0.5 at the DNS forwarder, right? So this will respond to the DNS forwarder. The response arrives at the on-premise internal DNS server. And the client VM establishes a private connection to the private endpoint that uses the private IP, which is 10.5.0.5.0.5, which is a private endpoint to my Azure SQL pass. Okay, so this was when we used the, uh, the DNS forwarder VM. Okay, now when you use a DNS private resolver, when you use the DNS private resolver, you don't need a DNS forwarder VM. I don't need this. And Azure DNS is able to resolve the on-premise domain names. So if my client VM would try to connect to this, if I use a private uh, DNS private resolver, I would not use a DNS forwarder VM. So let me pull up that picture as well. And now if you would uh, see the scenario for the DNS private resolver. Now when you use DNS private resolver, you don't need a DNS forwarder VM and the components will be that uh, an on-premise network. Here it is. All right, then uh, this network, let's say it has a on the data center 10.0.0.24 range. And then uh, it has two local DNS servers, which would have 192.168.0.1. Then another would have uh, 192.168.0.2 both server work as resolvers or forwarders for all the computer inside the on-premise network. Okay. Now let me see one more thing. Now we have a hub network here as well. Picture here. It is the correct picture, my bad. 192.168.0.1 app to on-premise company, which is 192.168.0.0.1 slash Okay, now I also have you as an admin will create all local DNS and Azure on endpoints on these servers, these two servers. All right, and then conditional forwarders are configured on these server for the Azure blob storage or any other component, let's say Azure API management as well. 
okay then we have an azure express route connection side to side or azure express route gateway to my azure virtual private network okay so 192.168.0.10.1/2 which is which are the two on premise servers and ip address for my local servers are 192.168.0.8 and 192.168.0.9 which are these two servers okay these are the two servers i have a blob.co.windows.net forwarder setup and azure api.net forwarder setup on these two servers perfect all right then i have a hub network in my azure which is required for me to create the express route or a site to site connection so my hub network is 10.0.0/24 now azure fire i have an azure firewall which would provide a managed firewall as a service so azure firewall will always have its own subnet azure firewall subnet and then i have a network which is 10.0.0/24 i have uh, one spoke network another spot spoke network i have a vm inside it all right and i have a outbound endpoint as well and i have a azure dns private resolver and between these two networks i have a virtual network pairing so when i connect two networks for them to communicate with each other that is called virtual network pairing if you don't know what is virtual network pairing i would suggest you to go and read more about it okay then i have two spoke networks as well as i discussed 10100/24 10200/24 now how would the traffic flow from an on premise a dns query so an on premise server will query an azure private dns service record such as blob.co.windows.net and i have a forwarder for it okay now the request is sent to the local dns server at ip address 192.168.0.1 and 192.168.0.2 it can be any of these two servers these are my dns servers now a conditional forwarder on the local dns server for blob.co.windows.net forward the request to 10.0.0.8 which is my dns resolver here and how it is possible because i have a site to site connection through azure express route or a site to site vpn now the dns resolver would query azure dns and receive information about an azure private dns service virtual network link now azure private dns service would resolve dns queries that are sent through the azure public dns service to the dns resolver inbound endpoint which is 10.0.8 okay now let's say a vm vm1 this is my vm1 which is in azure it would query a dns record the spoke virtual network are configured to use the name resolution that azure provides because azure is used azure dns is used to resolve the dns query when the request is initiated from a vm that resides in azure virtual network now if this query attempts to resolve a private name the azure private dns service is contacted which is this you understand the private link that you create for a pass service so this those ips are 7.7.7 .7 for blob.co.windows.net and this is for api management service now if the query doesn't match a private dns zone that's linked to the virtual network azure dns connect to the dns private resolver the spoke one virtual network which is this 10100/24 has a virtual network link the dns private resolver checks for a dns forwarding rule that's associated with the spoke one virtual network if a match is found in the dns forwarding rule set the dns query is forwarded by the outbound and outbound endpoint to the ip address that specified in the rule set okay and the same way if a uh, 
VM2 spoke to initiates a connection, then it follows the outbound endpoint that is specified in the rule set for VM2. Now, if you talk about traffic flow for a VM DNS query via DNS private resolver, it would be VM1 queries a DNS record, the spoke virtual network are configured to use 10.0.0.0.8. Okay, if the query attempts to resolve private name, the Azure private DNS service is contacted. If the query doesn't match a private DNS name that's linked to the virtual network, Azure DNS connect to the DNS private resolver. The spoke one virtual network has a virtual network link. The DNS private resolver checks for a DNS forwarding rule that's associated with the spoke one virtual network. Okay, so some of the components that I want you if you are a senior engineer or starting the job or maybe have spent six months to one year in azure then please read about uh, what a vpn gateway is what is an express route azure virtual network azure firewall azure dns azure private dns service and the dns forwarders right so if you want uh, to see more details so you should read about azure dns like what type of hosting service it is, how it is used for hosting DNS domains now and some of the more components that I will discuss in the future use case scenario would be Azure traffic managers, uh, right? Traffic managers like how you can uh, have the high availability for infrastructure as a service apps in case of disaster recovery scenarios. Right. What are availability set? What are availability zones? What are the alternative scenario details? You should be aware about it. Okay. And as and when I will discuss more scenarios, you will be able to understand the components as well. You will you will hear about what all scenarios I'm talking about. So in the next video, we will discuss hub and spoke network topology in Azure, which is very common. And then uh, every interviewer would ask you or would would expect you to know what hub and spoke network topology is. So if you think that I should cover uh, more use case scenarios, please mention that those things in the comments as well. And if this video was uh, beneficial for you, and if you want more insights, I would love to have a feedback from your side. Right. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.